Radio. We are live. All right. Hello, this is Jeremiah and Michaela Harrison coming to you from our home uh, with Liturgy of the Home. And it is Saturday. We're actually making this video kind of on time. We, you know, remember, we used to do these at 2 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. every Saturday just before the calendar flipped over today. Well, it's 530 Central. But anyway, we've been, you know, just just a little background. Uh, I'm still working on our internet, so we're probably, you know, for those of you that may like pop in to see this live or even seeing it later, it's going to be a bit fuzzy. Mm -hmm. I've learned a few tricks on maybe like going through the images slowly, so that way it gives it time to, because we're way out in the boonies. But I uh, I put up an antenna mast for our uh, cell phone. We're actually running off of a hotspot from our cell phone now. The other internet just just is not working. So I've been doing this all day long. Well, there, I, I, unbeknownst to me, there was a very large wasp nest that uh, as I started to put in the, the screws for one of the hooks for the guy wire, well, they all came out to greet me. Yeah, well, so I, <laughs> all the girls in here, they just heard thump, 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 thump. And I, I just had ran from one end of the house to the other end. <laughs> and I was dancing and flailing my arms. I don't know how, but I somehow, not a, not a single one got on me to, to sting me. That's what was great. How, how many were buzzing? Around, I think there was think? probably about somewhere between 10 and 20 wasps that were angrily coming at me. I was right next to their nest. Well, mm -hmm. so I went back up a little bit later and took care of the nest and then finished putting up the mast. And so now we're going to see this. This might work great. Maybe our Internet's a lot better. Maybe it's really fuzzy. I'm going to go ahead and act as though it's fuzzy. And hopefully this comes out really well. So. Uh, so for many of you know, today's the last day for the third poster the mm -hmm. third poster of volume three tomorrow folks will be putting up their volume four and we're going to walk through the images and the symbols in our illustrated liturgical year so once again if you want uh you know for those of you who want to watch it all live that's great but also bookmark it maybe you want, want to watch the one month the one week sections one week at a time uh, next year we're hoping to be able to maybe make more videos and make them shorter. Yeah. It's more useful for like moms and homeschool and stuff like that. But uh, this year, this is, this, this is our format. So it's the best we can offer right now. <laughs> right now <laughs> we'll do, we'll do continuous improvement. Yes. So is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, well, just a little, I guess, chit chat at the beginning. We are, uh, we, we submitted the final files and we're looking forward to seeing the volume four come out oh, that's hopefully right. soon. So, the illustrating one whole year. Yes. We haven't made a video since you finished illustrating one whole year, right? Uh, I think so, right? Yeah. One entire year. You've, yeah. you've drawn the entire illustrated year. Yeah. 16 posters. A few more gray hairs, maybe <laughs> coming. <laughs> we so, did it, though. We got through an entire liturgical year with and, Sophia. And you're already getting ready for next year? Yep. We're reformatting. There's, there's, a, there's going to be a, a little surprise you want to tell what's going to be in next year's yes. volume one that's going to be unique. There will be a, something very unique in next year's. Um, the uh, last spread of Epiphany. Right. right? So Epiphany because the liturgical, year, the liturgical year changes, there's going to be this extra space in the Epiphany time. And so I was like, what can I do with that extra space? So I am super excited about what we're going to put in there. And it's basically a half of a calendar, half a poster. And it's going to be um, an illustrated map of the life of our Lord. And it's going to begin, it's going to show the Holy Land, the map. It's going to have begin with the Annunciation and then show all these different points of his life all the way up to uh, the Ascension. And we're hoping it will, and we'll even have little pictures taken from, the calendar, from all the different events of his life. And it will then reference on the map so the kids can see where each of these things took place, not just what took place. So I love maps. So I'm having a blast doing Designing this. <laughs> it's really fun. I, I kind of taking different um, uh, inspirations. So like I love like the Lord of the Rings mm. map, like mm -hmm. that old style, um, loves those maps. but also take, taking other references. And so I really I think it's going to be a beautiful map. And my hope if, if this won't be on every year is not going to yeah. have this because it depends upon what space I have to work with. So if, I, if it was me, probably what I'll do is whenever the year's over, I'll, I'll cut that map off the poster and then hang it on my wall um, for the and, kids to look at. And, and, and keep that in mind. There will be little each year. There will be little pieces like that. Like right. this year, 
on volume four, which for those of you who are subscribers, you know, I think that's probably coming in the mail fairly soon. I, I think so. it's done with the printers. But volume four is a very special scene uh, for the Feast of Christ the King, mm -hmm. All Saints and All Souls. So the, the, the timing of those feasts won't come next to each other again for a while. So yeah. this is a unique scene. So, I mean, uh, there's, I know a lot of folks are just keeping all the posters because they're so beautiful. But like if you do, say, uh, burn them at the end of the year and sort of bring in a new year, keep some of these unique scenes. That like that's That will be unique. That won't hear. And then this this map of the Holy Land will be unique. So we're, we're still figuring this thing out. But we're having fun with it <laughs> <laughs> in between babies and, and kids and stuff. So I think we're probably ready to go ahead and just okay. get started, right? Yes, I'm sorry. All right. Okay. All right. What do we have here? Poster four. Four weeks, poster four. This brings us through, what, September the 17th? That's right. I believe That's so. That's the end, and this begins on the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, which is the 21st of August. I believe this poster is uh, my sister Rose's favorite poster because this has a lot of mm. green. There's a lot of green in this, um, just the way the images, you know, play themselves out, and also the tone of the sky. So the sky, reminder, each each poster, the sky, as it's progressing through the year, um, it's getting darker and darker. So this sky on this poster is a little darker. It's got more purple um, because we're coming into the days getting shorter. And by the time we get to Advent, it's going to be night again. Um, so, and then we also still are using the Pentecost frame. So it's the gold. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The Immaculate Heart is beautiful um oh i just found out that um uh, uh anyway else. <laughs> tomorrow oh, sorry it's monday is the feast of the immaculate heart and some of our very um some people we're very close to are going to be uh receiving their uh, scapular their oblate scapulars oh, on monday. okay i shouldn't say who but anyway we're very excited so it's a special feast day um okay so okay so then the the columns are still have the lilies entwined around the columns. And that is because the last first class feast that we had was um, the assumption. And so at the assumption that turn all, all of the columns, um, uh, the carving changed to the lilies. Um, okay. So which, which Sunday, sorry, 11 Sunday, 11 Sunday. Okay, so this week the gospel is speaking about Christ healing the man who is deaf and dumb. And so you see here Christ is putting his finger into the man's ear. And the gospel is going across the mantle. He put his fingers into his ears and spitting, he touched his tongue. And so there's this reference to Christ healing him by touching his ear and his tongue. And this is... Um, if you continue across, you can see how in the sacrament of baptism, when the salt, the blessed salt is put on the child's tongue and the priest um, touches his ear and says, be opened. This is like a direct reference to the way that Christ healed him. And so, and then here in the corner, we have the baptismal font with the Paschal candle. And on that little table is all the things that the priest uses um, in for the sacrament of baptism. Right. This this reading, this gospel is deep, is linked to that sacrament, mm -hmm. and it's the way it's composed. So I tried with the imagery to really show that connection for the children. So when they see a baptism uh, happening, they can remember this gospel. Remember this gospel. Yeah. So I really really liked that. Um, okay, and then uh, the saint there, Saint. Uh, St. Jane Francis de Chantal. So she is kind of looking up at the scene, participating, you know, in a way with what's going on. But uh, come next year, she'll be on Monday. So I just finished drawing all of these saints that are on Sunday this year. They're all on Monday next year. So she has her own image next year. But for right now, she's discreetly tucked away in the, um, in the column there. Um, also, a reminder, the upper left corner the little image that's up there with the um, the little um, little reading thing there, that's all taken from from Matins um, during the early office that um, religious and um, priests and faithful throughout the world uh, pray these these um, prayers 
They're it, read, well, they're reading from the different books. I think these are coming from Proverbs, I think, at this time. I think so, yes. These are, this is reading through the book of Proverbs for this week. So they, that, these are two I, two women that are gossiping. There's little demons mm -hmm. there, and the little note, the little words are taken from from the from from the reading so reminder to not not to watch the tongue um all right so yes immaculate heart of mary uh she is here because this is the octave day of the assumption i believe mm. so um anyway you'll notice the little octave markers are there on the column and that's because this is the octave day um and uh unfortunately I, her roses around her heart should be white somehow. <laughs> they got to be pink. I think it was just a little mistake, but traditionally it's white. I don't know if it's a big deal, but anyway, I noticed the roses are red. <laughs> um, so and I, I want to show the source image that I pulled this from, which many of you would be familiar with. It's really beautiful. And I love how our lady's looking over at our Lord in the, um, in the Sunday. Um, then on to St. Philip Benizi. Um, I won't go into depth about the saints because we just don't have time, but the reason why he has the, uh, papal tiara there and the crozier on the ground is because they tried to make him Pope and he, he fled if I got the story right. And he didn't, did not want to have that honor. So it being on the, on the ground is sort of a way of, of him, like saying, no, I don't want that honor. Um, and also remember is that, you know, we have many fa families with these calendars every day. They'll pull out their missile if you have yes. a Father Lazance or if you have, a, a, was it the St. Andrews? I mean, a missile with good commentary. And really, we supply sort of these illustrations, but there's much really good material to read on the lives of the saints yeah. out there. Take advantage of that. It goes really well with the calendar. Yes. Uh, St. Bartholomew, second class, again, second um He's one of the apostles. He's holding the um, the knife uh, because he was martyred by being skinned alive. Um, so when I was doing image research for him, I was like, eh, I'm not sure I'm going to show him. A lot of the images, if, if you go into a church or different places, he's shown holding his skin. It's like hanging from his hand. So it's a little bit much. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just show the knife. But anyway, um, that's his... Uh, it's always trying to you know decide what's how much do I put in the calendar. So since very little children are looking at that, I'll just put it like that, and then the moms can choose how much they want to explain to their kids. Um, then uh, we have Saint Louis the Ninth. Oh, we have a comment. There he is. Mm. There he yeah. Okay. Wes, he was, he was um, echoing what we said, Wes. Thank Wes, you. Wes. Yep. Yes, that's yes. Um, all right, Saint Louis the Ninth. He's holding the crown of thorns. Um, he's the king uh, and saint who built or who um, constructed Saint Chapelle in Paris to house this relic um, of the crown of thorns. So, um, and um, he had multiple other relics as well. But I thought this was, I have a beautiful, there's a beautiful statue that I saw that I modeled this, this picture from. I thought the boys would particularly like it. Um, okay, next day. Um, this is uh, a feria day, but the commemoration is of Saint Zephyrinus. You see it? Zephyr Zephyrinus. All right, shows how much. <laughs> Not very good at pronunciation. There we go, Zephyrinus. <laughs> okay, so he was a pope, an early pope, and the reason why I chose this particular portrayal and scene of, hit, of his is because there were some um, heresies going on at the time, and one of them one of the heretics um I'm trying to remember the guy's name uh he basically um had like a series of dreams where and then a, like one legend says an angel came and like whipped him all night and the next morning he put on sackcloth and ashes and went and begged for forgiveness from from the pope um so this is him like you know forgiving him um and then a uh, saint joseph um Calisanctius, this is him uh, with with um, the the orphans or the children, the boys that he was helping take care of. So I just thought that was a really charming um, portrayal of him. So that's why that's there. Are we going to keep track of the minutes so they can just go uh, through a week, or we'll just well, we, yeah, we might do that. Or we're at fourteen forty six. Okay, we will continue. I can do that. Good All right, idea. thank you. Good idea.
All right. On to the week two. On to week two. So uh, St. Augustine's Feast falls on this Sunday. So that's he, That's him in the corner. You have God the Father up in the upper left corner um, in the beginning, um, creating the, the heavens and the mm. earth. It's a beautiful. I like this one a lot. I like that little image there. That image, yes. Yeah, it's sort of mirroring what we have for the O Sapientia in Advent. Yeah. So we like it. The gospel is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Christ is at the bottom teaching this parable, and then there's the clouds of the mist partitioning him from uh, the illustration of the image of what he's, he's speaking about. And so here you have the Good Samaritan finding the man on the road, and you see in the distance mm. the robbers running away that robbed him, and then you have the priests and the Levite, Levite that are that walked past, um, and the scroll going across. And this, I think, is one of one of your sister's favorite scenes with just how green the green and the gold. Yeah. So there's the robbers, like looking out. As you zoom in, you can actually see the um, you can see the man there coming on his little horse. So they're, oh, they're, they're like waiting looking, for him. They're waiting oh, for him. Oh my! So. Hmm. So that's them waiting, and then you go across, and this this is him being left by by the Levite and the um, and the priest. So they're walking past, and then you see, well, then I guess in the the story, then it's it's, right. it's the gospel that's image, and then this is him lifting him onto his horse, or sorry, onto his donkey or his, uh, and then. You Take see him. him being brought to the inn, and that's the innkeeper coming down. He's getting him up off his, off his beast of burden. So, anyway, so that's that's the the story sort of being continued across the mantle. Um, I really love having this way of showing a parable at a glance, where you see our Lord telling the parable, and then the parable itself at the top half, because I can glance through through the whole. Each Sunday, you go. Oh, is it a parable today, or is it something like a, an event that happened? Right. And it's nice to be able to quickly see it. Well, you know, and I realize that we, we, I wish I knew this. We should dig into this at some point. But I do believe each of the characters and their types all have meanings. Why a Levite and a priest, and why there were two, and why the robbers are all these things. They actually have meaning. And I bet you there's there's some homilies given by saints on this very parable that probably dives wow. into those meanings. Well, shout we out to, to uh, census fidelium. I'm sure he's got multiple yeah, <laughs> recordings on that's there. That's right. Little, little, they go into that. Yeah. So, um, all right. And then the beheading of St. John the Baptist here, you have the angel with the palm coming down as the sword is about to, to come, uh, in the rays of light. Um, I just like the composition a lot. And then it's a commemoration of St. Sabina. Um, but anyway, there's so much more to each story. But anyway, okay, going mm. on. St. Rose of Lima. Uh, she's my confirmation saint. So I have a particular love for her. This is her um, carrying her cross. And, uh, and then the commemoration of St. Felix and Autictus. Adoctus. 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 That's okay. right. And St. Rose, did, did she not have a herself a devotion to St. Catherine, Catherine of Siena? Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why you chose her, because you really love St. Catherine of Siena. I love both of them. So, so you got both of them. Yes. Through Saint, there you go. Through St. Rose. And my sister's name is Rose, and she was born on the feast day of St. Rose of Lima. So hmm. she's in the family. <laughs> uh, okay. St. Raymond Nonatus. Uh, he's Nonatus means not born. And he he was uh, born via cesarean back a long time ago before that was like an easy thing. So his mother died. He lived. Uh, and he's particularly invoked for women that have a hard time conceiving um, or for pregnancy, uh, for health issues. Um, and there's a special blessing in the Rituale Romanum for water and candles um, that are invoked. Or sorry. How do you say it? I'm not good with words. <laughs> so embarrassing. Anyway, the reason why I put the candle in there is just sort of like a, a, a nod to um, to that that tradition. And he um, his story is that he would go 
and free Christians from the Muslims. And that's why the man there is holding the chains to show that he had been freed by St. Raymond. And uh, when when Raymond and those that did, that did the same thing, when they would run out of money, they would exchange themselves for the Christian slaves. And so he became a slave himself and he would not stop preaching. And so they they put a padlock to his mouth to make him try to make him stop. So that's why there's a padlock there. And then um, I zoom out. I just want to double check. He is, I want to see the color. Yeah, he's white. So he's holding the like a martyr's palm with the three crowns because he suffered so much, but he's not technically a martyr. So that's why his color is not red. Hmm. But, but the three crowns are like almost like the three types of ways that he was, you know, gave of himself for, for the love of souls. So almost like an honorary martyr. Um, okay, the next day is Ophelia Day with a commemoration of the 12 Holy Brothers, as well as sometimes there's a commemoration of St. Giles. So I kind of got both in here. I figured it'd be hard to draw 12 brothers <laughs> in a tiny space. So I gave them the palms and the crowns and then put St. Giles in here with the deer. His story is, is that he was like a hermit and he, no one knew where his whereabouts or where he was, but um, hunters... Oh, and this deer, he had a pet deer, and he would uh, get the milk from the deer. I think that's part of the way he lived. And hunters were hunting the deer and tried to shoot, or they were trying to shoot the deer, but they ended up, I think, shooting him with the arrows. And um, he, he wasn't, like, killed or anything. He just was, like, injured, but that's how they found him, and then he became more well-known. Oh, boy. So, I, think it, I think it's St. Giles. I Giles, bet, okay. I bet, I bet so. Sorry. Although I'm not sure. So we could drop Read the more too. about it. <laughs> um, all right. St. Stephen of Hungary. Um, He's one of our boys' favorites, right? They really love this picture, yes. I was reading a little bit What's about him. What's not to love, yeah. Uh, he's the king of Hungary. Um, what did she say? He said, you guys bless us so much for these beautiful calendars. I was not as tried as I wish my family. I could be, but this little way brings us closer. That is exactly what we're trying to do. So we're yeah. trying to grow closer ourselves. I mean, we're really, I mean, as you've said many times, you really didn't know a lot of this stuff before you began this project. You learned, yeah, so, learned much, so much. So we're really on, on that same journey. Yeah. So that's we, like, what's not to love. Like, as you learn more, it's yeah. like, you just fall more in love with it. And I'm, I apologize that I'm not a great speaker and I'm, I, I stumble out with my words and I can't remember things very well, but it's like, this is my offering of the art. And thankfully there's the missile and there's lots of resources for those that really want to learn more. So even though I'm not the best at that, I can at least offer why I put certain things into the calendars and I'm hoping it'll pique people's interest to continue learning. So I think it is. Yeah. Well, it piqued my interest. I just want to keep learning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> I you appreciate so it. Much. Um, all right. Yeah, it takes a little bit to get up and actually talk. Like it's a little bit hard for me. Well, yeah, well, we're, we're, we're to about me, to give a talk, right? Yeah, I don't know how it's gonna go. She told I said you gotta be easy on me. I've never given a talk before, but we yeah. got we got asked to give a talk in Arkansas. A little so little parish in Arkansas. We'll see. We'll see how yep. it goes. Yep. Um I just wanna encourage, especially mothers, because there's not a lot out there to help mothers understand and love liturgical year in an easy to get two way and i just feel like the posters could really be a bridge for that mm. so yeah another comment the saint andrew such a great resource especially that's uh, that's absolutely you know i i'm trying to remember i'm the one who i'm the one who's really been pushing this in our house and i don't well, remember I how i discovered it. it i use it all the time oh now. well yeah well that's just the commentary is so good it is. On, on this is one of the best commentaries i've, I've seen of any missile but yeah, yeah. i just uh, i can't praise the saint andrew enough Yes. Well, so, so because um, Dom Guéranger's liturgical year, um, you know, he never fully completed it for this whole time after Pentecost. I've relied really heavily mm. on St. Andrews just because it's more to the point. More concise. And um, yeah, hopefully I get a chance to read it more in depth next year. I'm looking forward to finish. Now that I finished this year out, I actually will have a little more time to read more because I was having to go so fast this last year to get it done that I wasn't able to read as in depth as I, as I wanted mm. to. Well, yeah, I guess that means hopefully over the next year, as we continue making videos, we'll get better and yes. get more, uh, get better at these. So, okay. So we have St. We'll continue with St. Stephen and then St. Pius the 10th. 
Yes. Was there, was there something some... about St. Stephen. So he um he was baptized. His parents, I think, uh, were they were either pagan or just not practicing. And he um he how do I say this? He founded a lot of monasteries. He really uh, brought about peace and stability for his kingdom and really put out strong, you know, he really enforced the Christian faith and the culture in his, um, at his time. And I think the Pope at the time was Sylvester, but after he died, um, none of his sons succeeded him because they had all died. And I think there was, um, it, the rulers that came after him were pagan and the, there was kind of this chaos after him, but eventually there was stability again. And he was revered as a saint And this. The time he ruled was kind of a golden time hmm. for Hungary. Um, so anyway, very strong King, uh, St. Pius the 10th, uh, he's very well known as lowering the age for first communicants. And so this is him, um, giving first communion to some young people there. Um, so that's why I chose that that's picture. Seen. Very good. Yes. And that All brings right. us to the end of this week, the okay. second week, and we begin now with the third week. A time check? Yep. Okay. 13th Sunday after. All right. This is, the, is that the 13th? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. You can 13th see that Sunday. Yes, that's right. So this is the uh, the parable, or sorry, not the parable. There's no clouds. This is the um, the gospel of the healing of the ten lepers, and so you hear you see the ten lepers here reaching out to our Lord, and He is pointing towards the city, saying, "Go present yourselves to the priest in the temple." So that's kind of why our Lord has that particular posture. Um, you see a uh, Job up in the upper left corner there. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away, and He's kind of you know had his head down in prayer there. Um, so the little mantle going across, you have the 10 men that were lepers lift up their voice saying, Jesus, master have mercy on us. And so you see the image there is them going to show themselves to the priest. And you have the one looking back. And one of, the, one of them, when he saw that he was made clean, went back and he fell on his face giving thanks. And he's, and so then you see him kneeling there in front of our Lord and our Lord's kind of looking out towards the ones that uh, didn't come back. And he says, you know, where are the other nine? Have mm -hmm. none of them come but to return, you know, and give thanks except mm -hmm. to this Samaritan. Um, and he said, go thy way for thy faith hath made thee whole. There's a lot of beautiful analogies as to right. what these 10 men represent. Uh, the 10 commandments was one of the um, ones I was reading about. And um, the ten lepers are like the ten ways that the, that in their in their the leprosy was the ways that the, these ten ways that um, our souls become leprous by breaking of these commandments. Um, and so it's interesting. You zoom out. Also, well, oh, we say? we say, look, we we have a little mistake. I know we we're the red of the halo. Forgot. No, there's we always there's make, always make a note for next there's year. There's always those little bloopers that escape through. So Congrats. the 10. Yes. Oh, but I was going to say, so see, here's, here's God, the father in the week, giving the 10 commandments here. Um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but yeah. the 10 commandments, there are a reference to, to this idea that the 10 lepers um, represent the way the 10 commandments, you know, uh, are, broken. are broken. And the little, um, the words there are taken from the collect, make us love what thou dost command. And then there's the Ten Commandments. Do we know what the uh, the one who came back? <clears throat> I'm trying to remember the commentary on this. Um, I don't know that. So the next fairy a day to Abraham were the promises made and to his seed. And there you have Abraham and God the Father pointing to all the stars and saying, I will make your descendants numerous. But the reference to his seed is not it's singular it's not plural and that's a reference mm, to, Christ to christ as you know that is the the, the seed um from which we all come uh so anyway so, there's there's some tie-ins there well that and that and that is a reminder of the convention we have on feria days to many times put images that link to the gospel or link to that period of time and so right. that's that's what you did here mm-hmm um, so St. Lawrence Justinian is on Monday and he's known as the patron. I think it's of Venice. Um, 
I'm trying to make sure I got my cities right. But anyway, so that's that's in there. With check a little the, angel. If, you're, if you're a member of our digital uh, our digital subscription, check the comment pages. All that all that that information is there. Okay. Man. All right. And I know you went over these two, but I just wanted to say this this image I really love, and this idea too. This is part of the collect, but this is just such a, a powerful thing to dwell on. Make us love what thou dost command. If you read in the Psalms, and really just you get a you get the sense that the entire Christian life is learning to love the statutes, the commandments, the ways of God, learning to love what he commands, mm -hmm. learning to love it. I mean, to prefer to do that which pleases him above all else. And that that's that's what becoming a Christian or growing in holiness is all about. And so I just I really loved that that when in particular, so many of the colex in the traditional mass have that you can see that focus so clearly. Mm -hmm. They are the prayers we need to grow in holiness. They really are. And I just this this one just stood out to me very, very much for you cho choosing that and then illustrating that. Um, and so that first make us love without his command, that's from the collect. And then to Abraham, where the promise is made into his seed, that's taken from the epistle. Hmm. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Um, and then we have the nativity of the blessed Virgin Mary. Second class. I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, I looked through a lot of source images. I really wanted one of Anne and Joachim together. Uh -huh. And I wanted Mary to be there, you know, to between them and i wanted her to look like a little baby girl and so i had to go through a lot of pictures to find a good baby girl picture and then you have the angels up there with the um you know the all the letters of maria or mary or whatever so i found that i thought that was really beautiful um so ann and joachim appear multiple times this is their uh their second time, I guess, because Joachim's feast yeah, day. Yep, it was he on, would, this last this last week, or was it yes. earlier this week? Right, because he had the yeah. uh, the assumption was this last Monday. Yes, so Saint Joachim's the day after right. assumption, yeah, and so, yeah. then Ian was earlier in, in the, the same poster. So here they are again with with the baby Mary. Um, so yeah, I know, and that's sweet. I loved it. Um, okay. Did you freeze up on you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody's getting my mouse back. Oh, quick note. So St. Adrian here, if you notice, there's two characters. I decided to do this. Saint Ad this is a couple, and um, the husband is St. Adrian. He was a guard for the Roman, for the Romans, a Roman guard, and his wife's Natalia. And in the Eastern Rites, they are their feast is celebrated together. It's not done in the West. So that's why it's just his name and not her name. But um, a lot of the images were of the two of them together. And I just thought we need to show more couples strengthening each other. Um, sorry, there's, they have a beautiful story. So that's why there's two people there in that picture. Um, St. Peter Claver, he's well known for um, ministering to the Africans that were being brought over and... Um, were being treated very in very difficult situations and he baptized so many of them and was such a comfort to them and uh i just thought this was a really sweet picture not only is he shown um baptizing them but you see how like the the child there is like holding on to him because he was like a father figure to to them um so anyway the, the blue, the, the water's a little blue, but I want to make sure it didn't get missed. So I made yeah. it a little blue, but anyway. Um, okay. And then St. Nicholas of Tolentino. Um, he, I believe, is Augustinian. Yes. Right. 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 Augustinian. I, remember, I was just, I was just reviewing all of the coloring pages for upload. I do, I oh, okay. That. Um, he okay the, the one thing i thought was really the stood out to me so he's like the he's known especially for his love of the holy souls in purgatory and he's like their special saint and he gave much of his life and his prayer to praying for them and um so he's he's especially associated with the holy souls in purgatory do we remember do we know Prece, precepta patris mei ser servavi do you remember what that means? <laughs> Patris mei, my father, 
Sir, serve you. I, was, I, I will, will serve. serve. I will serve. I need to go look look at that yeah, quote. Got I get... will say this is a great segue. Um, this so this was the companion guide that came with this set of posters. It's only like four two pages folded in half. The companion guide for the next set of posters is going to cover so much more material. Uh, Kateri. So um, I did the companion guides before <laughs> they fired me and they did the next one and they did a an That's awesome job. So I apologize. Uh, you know, and, and then of course I think, you know, next year the companion guides will, the, the ones that I did will get an upgrade That's for, right. for next year's That's poster. Right. So <laughs> no, we had we had a change in, in life circumstance. So Kateri ended up taking over the job and it she it did, right? she did a very good job. It got I was, a little bigger. I, not too much bigger. What eight pages? Yeah. Well, it's funny because yeah. even though I I'm the one 12, that did all this composition and and thinking through these posters after I finished reading the companion guide that she put together for it, I was like, this is such a cool calendar. Like <laughs> it reminded me of all the cool things that right. I had read. But it it she was she's so good about bringing it all together, mm. and it'll be much more quick to find what you want to understand it better. So you won't need as much of these videos because it'll, a lot of it'll be in the companion guide. Um, so like things like, like this situation here with there being Latin, um, she'll have all the quotes in, in there. So that's uh, part of the uh, continuous improvement that we're doing. Right. So, so if you're, if you're, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested in these calendars, Sophia Institute uh, dot com. Yeah. Count put calendar in the search bar and jump on the the Illustrated Liturgical Year subscription for uh, twenty five dollars a quarter. They will send you that set of calendars. And Volume Four is is coming out now, which takes us from uh, September the eighteenth all the way to the end of the year, which the end of the liturgical year, which means uh, right. end of November. End of November, and then Volume One will pick up then with uh, with Advent and Christmas, and that'll be coming. I mean, this next quarter is actually the shortest. You'll notice there's only three posters. It uh, kind of balances out because uh, the Easter quarter had five. Right. So this one has three. And then so, and then of course, this next year is going to be your first, second year. Yeah. Right. So this is going to be interesting to see how the the shift, yeah. the shift of the temporal cycle, how's that going to affect the posters? Yeah. Uh, I'll take a quick moment. So I have a, a, a way to help people understand what, why is the liturgical year change every year? And there's there's these there's the temporal cycle and there's the sanctoral cycle and these are two cycles that um, are are sort of passing back or the the temporal cycle is the life of Christ so like Christmas Easter um, uh, so the the major life um, events of of Christ's life those especially like the ones really because Easter changes. And everything on the temporal cycle is based off of Easter and Easter is not a fixed feast, but Easter itself is calculated based on the, the lunar calendar. And then the, when the vernal equinox or the spring equinox, because the entire liturgical year is meant to be, uh, you know, grounded in on earth and in heaven. And so this is why the seasons it's important. The, the, our Lord came now. So there's there's Easter is calculated, but Christmas is fixed. So our Lord comes into the world at the darkest time of the year. You mm -hmm. know, the winter solstice is December the 21st. Our Lord is born just after that. And then the days get longer and longer. And then Easter, Easter arrives and there's this bursting forth and flowering of things. Well, because of that calculation, Easter can shift as much as four weeks yeah. from one end to the other. So you have all of these other feasts which are calculated from Easter, you know, Corpus Christi. All the different Sundays. You know, Ash, the... Ash Wednesday is determined by how many days until right, Easter. Right. So you have you have all these things that that shift. But the sanctoral cycle is fixed. fixed. And so imagine you've got, you know, the sanctoral cycle here and you have this temporal cycle. And so as it's moving and shifting each year, different saints are coming through or being hidden. Superseded right. By, by a great and feast. so because of that, um, you, you you get uh liturgical eclipses so like we had the sacred heart and john the baptist they kind of eclipsed this year because a sacred heart shifts with the temporal cycle but john the baptist was fixed and so 
Since anyway. John the Baptist got bumped. If you're wondering, well, which ones are which ones are temporal cycle and which ones are sanctoral? Basically, the saints, or sorry, the the feasts in the front of the missal are temporal, and the ones and that are more in the after, back are the. So yeah, you have the temporal, and then you have the ordinary, and then you have all of the calendar. Of so, the fixed so saints. the mass is in the middle. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. And, and this and artistically, what's neat is is this is why you have this convention where you'll have saints in the pillars, right? Right. For example, like on this twelfth Sunday. You know, this was, this is the feast of Saint Augustine, and so in a sense, with these calendars, even though his feast day was eclipsed, uh, he still participates. He's still right. there. So we're trying right? to show all that. And then together. next year, you'll see a full color picture of it, right? Yeah. So, so although with, that's not because the temporal cycle, that's that's because it's falling on a Sunday. But still, the idea is, is that no matter. Well, right. Well, but but this this Sunday. Yeah, oh, okay. be, yeah. But him being on the thirteenth, or sorry, the twelfth Sunday, that that 12th Sunday is determined by the temporal cycle right. and then it happens to coincide right. with him. So yeah, that part, right. that part is. So then, sorry, we kind of got one on a tangent right. well, there. Know, we, I, I'm, I'm sure some folks are going to derive some benefit from that. Yeah. Okay. So we're going into the fourth week. Okay. The last week on this calendar. Yeah, I'm just going to write down. All right. 14th and Sunday after Pentecost. Sunday after Pentecost. This is uh, taken from the, the Sermon on the Mount. This is, you know, Christ. He's, he's saying, the, you know, look at the birds of the air. Um, and so that's him with his arms up and the people are sitting there listening and he says, you know, be not solicitous for your life, what you shall eat, nor your body, what you shall wear. And so I put in the mantle, you know, some people that are being very solicitous for what they're eating and what she's wearing. This is, um, yeah, I really like these. great examples of this a little bit pompous, but Hey, hey no, it's very, got to show no, some no. extremes here. So want to be clear. You yes. don't want to be so ambiguous. This is showing what you don't want to do. And then on this side, this is uh, St. Clair and St. Francis. Um, the reason why I chose them as examples of what we ought to be more uh, tending toward is because uh, his uh, there's a commemoration of St. Francis's uh, stigmata at the end of the week. Hmm. So that's why I kind of pulled him. I will do that sometimes. If I have a particular saint... Uh, if there's, if I need an example, I'll sometimes pull the saint from that week. Um, mm -hmm. But this is another example. So come in future years, Saint, this that feast of Saint Francis may not fall with this Sunday. So mm -hmm. I might have to find another example of a, a different saint. Right. Well, we'll keep going though, because look, we, we you, behold the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor do they reap. And, and then you, why did you chose the image? That you have the image of the pelican, and then here is our Lord like walking in the Garden of Eden. Right. right. Well, this this is. The, the heavenly father feeding them. Uh, if this is taken mm -hmm. from, uh, this is, there's a beautiful, there's, there's several of these pictures of the, of the heavenly father walking in the garden and, you know, blessing all the birds. And so I thought, Oh, what a perfect image to put there. And then of course the pelican is an example of Christ feeding us. And it's the symbol, symbol of the Eucharist. Um, and so God, the, you know, God takes care of us and feeds us from his very uh, flesh so no need to be too concerned. No need to become like this at all. Always have to trust in the Lord and he will provide. Yes. Um, the Matins readings are a continuation of the story of Job. And so he says, you shall not find iniquity in my tongue for the, his friends were trying to get him to curse God because he was in such he a lost. sorry state, but he would not. And so that's what that image is. And he was right. Yes. And we have two saints here on the on the column yes. for this Sunday. Saint, uh, two early martyrs. Protus and Hyacinth. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the most holy name of Mary. I really liked, I liked this composition a lot. Um, it's a really beautiful coloring page, too, that we have to go along with it. Um, this Feria Day is the excerpt, you know, is... Um, a continuation of the gospel passage. Consider the lilies of the field, for they labor not, but I say to you, they're not even Solomon in his glory was arrayed as one of these. So uh, these are these are lilies, and there's a little child there. And I just thought this captured a little more of what the the message of the gospel was. Um, here we have Two great feast days here this uh, this week. So we have the exaltation of the Holy Cross and the seven sorrows of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, the story of what's going on for the exaltation of the Holy Cross. This is when the cross was returned to Jerusalem. So it had been taken, I believe, by the Muslims. And when it was 
recaptured by the Christians and brought back to Jerusalem. That's that's what this feast is commemorating. And uh, the king, the, the or the emperor? He was the emperor at the time, right? He, was, he tried to process in with the cross with all of his like royal garb. And when he got to the, when he was approaching Jerusalem, uh, he couldn't, he couldn't continue. He was stopped. The cross would go no further and they didn't know what to do. And then the um, Bishop of Jerusalem uh, said, I think, I, I don't think God's pleased with you wearing all his fancy robes. This is not at all like how the cross was. This is not <laughs> how it was carried before by our Lord. So oh. the King took off all his Royal robes and just put on his simple, whatever garb and then he was able to carry the cross into jerusalem so that's why there's no halos on them these are not saints um uh strictly uh canonically speaking but um right. that's the story of what's going on yeah. so so saint helena is the one who first discovered the cross and there's another feast that's no longer strictly on the, the calendar anymore it's a historical feast and th she was the mother of Constantine, and she was the one who went to Jerusalem and first found the cross. And they, uh, the finding of the cross is a feast day back in um, Easter time. Mm, that's right. I remember that. And they were able to discover the cross because there was a sick woman, and they found three crosses, and they touched each cross to her. And when the true cross was touched to her she instantly recovered so that's how they found the cross and then later on the cross was taken away from jerusalem and this is the feast of it being returned so this is this is i don't even know how many long long okay, time yeah. after the first finding of the cross so saint helena was with the first feast day so they kind of combined them the two events in this feast day but i have a i have a historical reference on the easter calendar um it's over there right I remember we, we talked that about one. that one. So, um, but anyway, Ellie, yeah, stories are amazing. Um, so then the seven sorrows of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I just have the little images of the seven sorrows: the prophecy of Simeon, the flight into Egypt, the finding, the the loss of the child Jesus mm -hmm. in the temple, the meeting of Jesus and Mary on the way of the cross, Christ's death on the cross, him being taken down from the cross, and then being laid in the tomb. Um, those are her seven sorrows. So there's little images of each of those. Um, and then there's the, inst there's the pillar and the spear, mm. which pierced our Lord's side. And then the vinegar, the gall on the, um, on the, on the top of the stick. Um, you know, I just realized I, I haven't researched this, so I might be making, um, I'm not sure this is right, but so our youngest son is named James. And Mary's first apparition while she was still on this earth was, was to St. James. Mm -hmm. And it's called Our Lady of the Pillars, the oldest Marian apparition. And I had a thought, why on top of a pillar? Like, I don't know, like, what did the pillar mean? And I thought, I bet it was representative of the pillar that, that the Lord Christ, was, yeah, the scourging was, at the, the scourging pillar. At the and pillar. I think her being on top of it might have given him strength because he was really discouraged trying to evangelize in uh, Spain. Hmm. And she kind of appeared and strengthened him, and she was on top of a pillar. And I thought, oh, I bet, I bet it was a reminder of Christ's suffering at the pillar, and yet he he conquered that. And maybe that was what gave him the strength. So mm -hmm. anyway, I don't know that that's for sure. If there's another reason why the pillar was, um, why she chose to appear atop the pillar, but um, okay, Saint Cornelius and Cyprian, both martyrs, they have their poems, um. Uh, and then you have the commemoration of St. Euphemia, Lucy, and Germanus. Um, it's kind of interesting how she has her hand in the lion's mouth. And as a really cool statue I found of her where she has it like that. And so I kind of had to rotate to get that there. But that um, she was thrown to the lions. Um, so that's why there's that picture there. Um, uh, I don't know what I was going to say. Oh, yes. Yeah, so... Um, and then the last day, Our Lady on Saturday, uh, this is the commemoration of the impression of the sacred stigmata on St. Francis. This is St. Francis of Assisi. This was the first time, from what I have what I have read, this is the first time that anyone had ever had the stigmata. So when St. Francis had it, 
They didn't know what it was. They never heard of it before. Now, since mm. St. Francis, wow. there's been several know. other um, stig stigmatists, st stigmatists, <laughs> as they call them. Um, so this is an image of him receiving it. Um, but I forget how many. there. I remember reading there's a, a certain number of people that have had the stigmata. But I think a lot more women have had the stigmata than men, if I remember correctly. Hmm. Anyway, something to look at. And then there's St. Uh, Hildegard there in the... Hildegard being in the column. Yes. Yeah. With her chant music, she's writing. So anyway, should we go over... That <laughs> brings us to the end. All right. Poster four, volume four, volume three. And then now I am the second section. We have to, we have to walk through the, uh, the imagery. Yes. These source images, and I, I, we can bounce back and forth a little bit, but. Uh, okay. So this is the uh, engraving that we used for the first Sunday. I just want to zoom in a little bit just to mm. see it. I guess there's him touching the ear of the uh, deaf and mute man. From the first Sunday. Yeah. Of the, of the... Part of why I want to show you the source images because they're just so beautiful. It's hard to find. It's, it can be hard to to see beautiful art sometimes. There's so much bad art out there. So I thought mm. you see something truly beautiful. So this is the image for the Immaculate Heart. The, the Monday, the Monday that follows yes. that. Yes. It's on the cover of a of one of one of our books. Hey, go look at the statue. Do you remember which which one was yeah, that? Yeah, here. Make sure I get the right name. Good switch. Here I'll flip back. So we're basically we're still in this. So this is Saint Philip Benisti. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah, because it's not this this particular statue is not marked on the on the image. Sorry. <laughs> well, I've had to. Well, no, I mean, many, many times when, when folks take pictures, usually on this base here, there'll be an uh, engraving of the name. Okay. So. All right. So there he is. You can see I put him in a very different uh, environment on the calendar because he's, he's in the woods because he kind of ran away to the caves. <laughs> okay. And then this is just oh. the upper part for the same. I thought I knew. Yeah. But then I had to use another picture to finish out the rest of him. All right. Ah, here is. This is not Saint. This is the first king. This is Louis the Ninth. Louis the Ninth. Isn't that a beautiful statue? Yeah. So yes, lovely. Yes, it is. So see, he's not holding the crown of thorns in this this statue. So I had to put that in. See how he's holding the crown of thorns there. Ah, yes. It's so fun searching around trying to find good pictures. All right. And here is the Saint Zephrinus. Or Zephr the Pope who forgave the heretic. Yep. The heretic who repented. Yes. Praise that's, the Lord. That's what you're supposed to do. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a, if only we had some some of the bad guys we know of in today's world would repent. That would that would be incredible. Yeah, may we all repent. <laughs> hmm. All right. So this is uh Saint Joseph. With all the little the little boys there, such a fatherly figure. Reminds me, it makes me think of Don Bosco. Yep. There were many, many such priests called to that, called to that work. And then here, this is an image from from the Saint Andrew. Yeah, from and right. this is in the mantle. Now so we're this on the second been... Sunday. This is some of the source for the second Sunday. Mm -hmm. Be thou opened. And then these are in the mantle piece, right? So yep. the image you got for the baby for baptism, this is where you got some of your... Yep. So you guys can just see the variety of stuff I'm pulling from for my sources. They're all very different. And the Good Samaritan. Here, uh, here, here's composition. You see the robbers? Yep. And then the Levite and the priest. Yep. All there. That's one thing I love about, you see these medieval or these, these old Catholic images how many in, in east and west how many of them would they depict everything there all together the story the story the whole mm -hmm. story there or in a series or just oh, this this is this was, this was for the lower part where christ is telling the parable telling. here's all the men there listening this is a tissot i believe he is 
he is really good. Those are really, really beautiful. So this is for the beheading of John, John the Baptist. But you can see the composition. I had to switch it around to make it fit in the space that I had. But it's just such a, it's a beautiful composition. I really liked it a lot. It's strong yet peaceful. All right. How we all should seek to be to face death. Yeah. Peaceful. Well, you think about you know all the stuff that's happened lately with COVID and everything, and just all the fear and all of the stress. We should face death like this. We should just face our dishes <laughs> like this. Yes, Lord, the dishes. <laughs> well, right, right. That, that, that's true. Everything. Again. Try to face everything in life as best as we can, and then, yes. and, and if we can do that, we build. If we build deep habits of facing everything in life. We pray for the grace God will give us the grace to face death well. If we can face well. the little things all our life well, we should be able to hopefully yeah. face face death well. Okay. St. Rose of Lima. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful little holy card. I just, I loved the She, one of the stories I loved about St. Rose of Lima was she would carry a, a life-size cross around a garden where she, off, outside of her house. And that was how she did her stations of the cross oh, was by wow. carrying a life-size cross. So. And here is an excellent picture of St. Raymond of Nantes. And you can see there's the little padlock there. It's right? a little too it's small. Little. So I, I chose a different padlock clearer. so kids could see what it was. But yes. Wow. What an amazing saint. Just imagine that the, he and all the group of, of the priests with him ransoming. And then whenever they ran out of money, they just sold themselves. Yep. I just, I think, and then, and, then, and they sold themselves. And then they continue preaching the gospel while in captivity. And then they, they won't shut up and they just keep going and eventually he has to lock his mouth closed. I imagine he still found a way to keep speaking even with the lock on his mouth. I don't know. At least <laughs> even just by the example like of people even he couldn't speak, just seeing that on him, they'd be like, wow, this man's heroic. People like that, when they go places, no matter where they go, people convert all around them. Yeah. So, St. Raymond, no, not just pray for us. Yes. This is this is the same order, right? Because I recognize that. Well, this same. this is still the same saint, but this is multiple oh, this is Donatus, images. Again. Okay. Ah, and here's the young man who is in, with his chains set free. So he has the chains, but I put the candle in his right, hand right. instead of so. Because of the the blessing. Yeah. And then now, that's I guess when they were putting the lock on him, eh? Yep. It was like a a form of martyrdom, you know. that oil painting. And here we have St. Giles. Yep. And there's the deer right there. Um, I don't know who this artist is. I There's a whole bunch of saint images that I've come across with this. The same sort of style? From the same artist. And hmm. I really like it a lot. And here, St. Stephen of Hungary. This statue is in Hungary. Yep. They... What oh, a beautiful statue. Oh, yes. It is possible, remember, it is possible to be a king or in the government or in a place of power and to be a saint. I know it seems like Not easy. nearly impossible these days because it seems like our, uh, most of them are crooks or something, but we have to remember this is our Catholic heritage and, and St. Stephen prays for his country and prays for us. Right. So, and then uh, St. Pius X. Yep. This, this this came from a holy card. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Our our one of our daughters is um, going to be receiving first communion in a few months. So. And yeah, here's you get the composition. That. The robber is waiting for, waiting for the man coming down the road. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really cool. Mm. So on the map that I'm working on, you can clearly see where Jericho is and where mm. Jerusalem is. And so the road to Jericho is also, you can see where Emmaus is. So where the road to Emmaus, so these different events that are taking place that the kids can find where those happen and, and how these things are connected. So Jericho is not that far from, from Jerusalem. And here the priest in this, we got the composition of the priest and Levite walking away. Yeah. <laughs> This is the one for him being put up onto onto the, the beast of burden the there. Steed. Mm -hmm. So I'll pull the image, but then I'll change the clothes and stuff to make it match across the story. This is an engraving. I 
So beautiful. Yeah. And here we have the Sunday. This is the the ten lepers. Mm -hmm. Here's our Lord. Um, so th this image was too spread out to really use uh, fully. So I had to redo the lepers and move them around to fit them in this Sunday. Also, you chose a different uh, image of the city behind. I did. I did. This one was a little too spread out, and I wanted it to be more something Clearly, clear where they could see the to, temple. Right. So I, I used to, use this one. To Jerusalem. Yeah. Wow. Boy, I wonder what it would have been like to walk the streets of that city in its day. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, this, what's the name again? St. Lawrence Justinian, that's right. Which was, just give ourselves. Right here. There we are. That's where we are as we're progressing through this, the. Uh... It's hard to find pictures of him. And see this angel here? I'm just, was not a super fan of the way this particular angel is so. Like, <laughs> I mean, chubby cheeks are cute on a baby, but this one was a bit much. <laughs> so I think I found a different child that was in here angel. the giving of the law this is where you where yep. you got your ferial mm -hmm. your ferial image mm -hmm. the ten commandments Lord, Moses. make us love what thou dost command mm -hmm. really like these engravings a lot they're so beautiful german yep so looking at the that's interesting below. notice here i should go back if you don't mind Notice how on this particular one, the commandments are more even on both sides. Oh, that's right. We changed it so the, Wait, traditional, yeah, the traditional way is to show the first three very... on the one side and then the rest on the other side because the first three are what we owe to God and then the rest are to our fellow man. And here's oh, Abraham. Showing Abraham. The stars, your descendants shall be as the stars in heaven. It's hard to, it's hard to imagine. You know, that really happened. I mean, you know, Abraham's as real as man as you or I, and God really did show him this and make this promise. And here we are living He's the father. thousands of years. Yeah. He's yeah. the father of all believers. It's not, in, the, in other words, you know, sometimes you go along and you see this beautiful art and you hear these stories and they're just beautiful stories. But every now and then you got to stop, got to pinch yourself. These are real. These are these are actual people the, who, who are, who are still today, who are in heaven, who can intercede on our behalf. These are not just fairy tales that where you just extrapolate a meaning or a lesson from. There is a meaning and a lesson like in a fairy tale, but then there's the added fact that it's actually real. It's the two coming together. Yeah, it's the two coming together. And so the whole, the walking through the whole liturgical year, really just growing as, as a Catholic to know God is to realize this marriage of spirit and body, right? So the telling of a great story. Yeah, the greatest story ever told. Of. And then here we have this some uh, for the. Um, so this is the composition lady. for it, yeah, for her nativity. nativity. But you can see I took the faces and made the Joachim and Anne look different here. And then also Mary didn't really look like a baby in this picture. It looks like mm. a little child. So I redid that. But I just I liked this composition of her still being you know in in bed and then Joachim being there. So. It's a lovely stained glass window. This is not in the calendar, but isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was a really a just charming little illustration. So I just wanted to pop it in there. <laughs> so that is, that is. So this is, I had a hard time getting a good baby face. So I use this for, for, for our lady, for Mary. I, and I put a little cap on her and it changed it, you know, a bit, but just to get like the cheeks I right see, and stuff. I see. There we are. And her hands, like the way the hands are. I wanted like the to be like the baby hands. So all right. St. Peter Claver. That's right. Oh, that is beautiful. Yeah. The statue. Yeah, a lot of your art comes from images of statues, pictures mm -hmm. of taken of statues. St. Nicholas of Tolentino. And I think uh -huh. if I remember correctly. I was going to use the quote that's there, that Latin, but then um, I think they were saying that that might be misquote. So sometimes mm. even with paintings, they'll, 
even art I find online, I still have to cross reference it with other things and make sure that it's accurate. Cause sometimes there's plenty of images out there that are not accurate. So mm -hmm. I don't always catch all of them, but thankfully we have advisors and people that have been helping us to make sure that um, we get things as accurate as we can. Right. And here is some of how you got in the mantle. This is, this are the lepers, mm -hmm. right? And the one looking back. Mm -hmm. I didn't go quite this crazy in my art, <laughs> but it still was is, helpful. Yeah, yeah. I, I liked this because I liked the movement. I feel like there was this strong sense. They're all leaning and going. Sorry, this way. <laughs> I'm backwards on the camera. But I just I liked I liked how they're all they're all going. And then he's like not leaning that way. He's stopped and turning the other way. So it's right. I thought it captured it well. Don't don't uh, just go with the herd. Think, right? right. <laughs> And here he is. Yes. Where are the other nine? Yeah, you can see them off in the distance. Just yeah. mm -hmm. I like the colors on that a yeah, lot. That is. So this is for the Sunday. Which Sunday is that? This for the last Sunday? Mm-hmm. Yep. The oh, the final, the birds of the air. That's right. This year? Yeah, 14th. This year. Yep. That's where I got the posturing and the people and stuff. But then the. But then the and you brought the birds. Yes. Brought them together. Yes. Here we are for our Lord speaking of them. And there they are. Yep. Swallow. We have swallows out here. We have I swallows. love swallows. Yeah, I think it's my favorite bird. I really like swallows. Probably reminds me of California uh, being at San Juan Capistrano. There's all these swallows nests there, hmm. and it was so beautiful seeing them. And they come every year. And that's where the image for the Most Holy Name of Mary. And there's the little child with the. These are daffodils, so not not. I the, just replaced it with lilies, right, right. <laughs> which worked. It was fine. Or not Solomon was arrayed. Not even Solomon was arrayed like these. And just a reminder too, we have to become like little children. Yep. Don't forget to smell the flowers. And this, this is what you took a lot of composition for. Mm -hmm. The exaltation of the Holy Cross. So I like this. Here's the statue I use for the seven sorrows of Our Lady. Hmm. And also, uh, you know, so many of you may know there's a planner coming out. What's really neat is in addition to the calendars, there's this series of 12 images that she's been making for the monthly dedications, right? And I feel that you have one for the month of October, which you guys- when September. You, oh, Holy Rosary. Oh, sorry, October. So it was- My bad. <laughs> so it not, but I just, this keeps reminding me of, oh no, yeah, you did have a different composition for October, but September is, okay. So you, you'll see this as in a really beautiful single image for the monthly dedication. If you get the planner, it'll be in there. And if you're, if you're in our digital uh, subscription, you can print off all of the, uh, well, we haven't released that one yet. I haven't put, uploaded it because September hasn't arrived. But when it comes, you can print out these yes. really lovely uh, picture of, of these seven sorrows to put up for the month of September. There's a beautiful so. um, uh, tradition of, of, of saying seven Hail Marys in, every day in honor of the seven sorrows of Our Lady. Mm. So During the families, month of September? Yeah. Well, okay. yeah. And, and having the image up there can help remind um, children and families of which, what are the seven sorrows? Um, we that, haven't when, done that. I want to do that this year. Yes. Every day during September. Yes. All right. We'll do it. All right, folks. Well, yeah. If you, if for those of you who made it this far, we've been an hour gone for the month of September. No, no. It's well, this is <laughs> month of September, seven Hail Marys each and every day. And then uh, get, get that, get our image and print it off for that, for that monthly dedication. So. I know this just jogged my memory because basically this is this is kind of the centerpiece of the yeah. composition he took for that. So, all right, I only found one of the imp source images. This was um, Saint Cornelius, I believe, because there's Cyprian ah, and Cornelius. Okay. Right, so right. it's just just for the one. <laughs> I couldn't find the other one. I don't know where the source image went. So sorry, I just have have the one here holding the the horn. I, I read about why he's holding the horn. I cannot remember why right now. So look it up if you want to know why he's holding a horn. Why I don't is remember. St. Cornelius, right? It's Cornelius. I believe Cyprian? Cornelius is the one on the left. I usually right. will do yeah. it in order of the Why name. is he holding a horn? Look okay. that up. Okay. Look that up. 
That's right. In our videos, we don't always tell you. In fact, we just sort of tell you what to look up. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and, and then, then the, here's the impression of the stigmata on St. Francis. Uh, you can see, like, I changed I changed quite a bit. So, like, in this one, our Lord's much bigger. And I, I made it much smaller and then changed the orientation a bit to make it fit. And then the, the image in the commemoration niche, that is the symbol of the Franciscans with the two mm. arms crossed. Um, I don't know about the history of this. I could definitely speculate why it's it's that way, but I don't want to say it wrong. But hmm. um, I wanted to pair those together. <laughs> what did she say, Courtney? <laughs> you guys are so cute. You're blessing my Saturday birthday, even if I can't pay. Just I'm just listening. <laughs> I'm okay. sure this help me share with my littles. Good, good, good. Well, yeah, it was Saturday work days for us too. In fact, we, well, I was working on getting the mast and the antenna up so I could have better internet so we could try to do this, but. But uh, sorry, you know, we're just is... we're a rambling couple <laughs> we, <laughs> exploring yeah, liturgical year and together. I think, and that's uh, let's see here. We're near the end, I believe. Unless... I think I have a few more because I put all. My... Ah, this is from the uh, the mantle. Yeah, right? this is the. Uh, if your children, if your children are struggling with vanity, just show them this picture, <laughs> and it might help cure them. Be not like this. <laughs> yeah, I should put this up on the wall somewhere. And then we have one. ah, be like this. St. Francis, St. Clair. The simplicity, the peace is what we hope and want. Oh, and this, this was great. This, Yeah, zoom in. I, I want to find translations. This. The reason why this I put this in here is not because this is in the calendar. This, but because we're talking about virtue and vice, this is an illustrated... Um, guide right guide these are the, the of these. the vices and like they're the daughters and the and, and the way that they break down and then you have the opposite virtues is what these doves are and then you these have, are the seven the seven great vices i believe the, the seven, so the but it's all in virtues. like german or latin or some something and so i need to figure out a way to get it and this is what we need to be like right the christian with yeah. the full armor of god with the shield with the sword it's such a cool picture. Yeah, this, I just this I want to explore it more. And this really this is this is something we really must recapture in our day is the science of understanding the virtues and the vices and how they're, you know, there there's a lot there. You know, that we know of what you've heard of the four cardinal virtues or we know of the seven deadly sins, but there's deeper like you see on the left side of the page you have sort of all the children. Well, the same thing of the virtues the seven even break into, you know, others more detailed ones, and so this this is an image you ran across. We've this was a much I think much more well known or more well taught within the church hundreds of years ago. We've mm -hmm. got to rediscover it. I remember as, as a Catholic, as I've been going on my faith journey, really rediscovering the virtues has really been a big deal. I would me, love I to for, make a teaching tool that's based off and modeled off this idea yeah. for you know parents and teachers to talk about virtue and vice with children. I think it. This sort of thing would be so captivating. So that's why I put that in there. If any of you know, like recognize where this comes from or anything, just you know, feel free to drop a comment or anything that we're that would be helpful. <laughs> and then here, okay, this is where you got the image when our Lord is walking with the birds. This yep. is from uh, the father walking in Eden. Yes. Right. Isn't that beautiful. Look at the duck. We 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 right, we right, have, right. Oh, over we here. Have up, 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 up high, up high flying. Look, that's a. Uh, the rule. Well, you or, have you have a duck here, then you have another one. That went there yeah, with because yeah, yeah. we have the ducks with the green heads like that. So that's right. Yeah, we have ducks. We have ducks, uh, three geese, and like ten chickens, and like thirty ducks. I like the ducks. They're really spunky. They're fun. They're fun. They're loud. Oh my goodness, they just quack and quack and quack. And then who? This is Saint Augustine. He's in the. Oh, that's right. He's a statue. Column. He's one of the columns. Yep. One of the great saints of the church. So much is. I have a really beautiful picture for him next year. Hmm. Well, I look forward to seeing it. Saint Hildegard. I love that icon. I think it's a beautiful icon. Yeah, this truly, it truly is. I wish someone out there would make a calendar. Oh, with the Eastern with icons. I can. I can, Yeah. That'd be so cool looking. I well, can't do it, I but mean, somebody probably could. Maybe two years from now or three years from now or something. Someone someone will do that. Take, well, you know what I'm saying? You could, like two, three years. Well, if they're going to do icons, go they probably courses. should do the Byzantine calendar, probably, which yeah. is not the same. 
as this calendar. Well, who knows where, where, where this project is going to go exactly? <laughs> this is this the one. This is another. This is Saint Sab I think it's Saint. Is it Saint Sabina? No, no, no. I'm getting one. Oh, here. Uh, or the hand of the lion's mouth. This, does it? This. Hold on. That's not what her name is. Well, we have it here. You have it there. Is this Lucy? No, F. F Ephemia? Yeah, the first one. Okay, that's saying Ephemia. I see you, you changed the, the angle a bit. But. Yeah, I changed the orientation. But she's holding a little tower there. Ah. I don't know why. So I find the statues or the images, and I don't always know why something's there. But if Sometimes I see you it, find. But if I see it consistently in all the images, I know, okay, there's something important there. So I put it in there even if I don't have time to study mm. it. So um, hopefully I can keep gathering more information and learn more. Uh, and he was also a commemoration. Yep, he was a commemoration. We didn't talk about him, but he was. There he is, right there. He's Saint there. Nicomedes. Yeah, and Seven Sorrows. All the Seven Sorrows. So. All look. right, I think that might be it. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Saint Mark, uh, Saint uh, Jane Francis de Chantal. She's on Sunday also. She's okay. A she was one She's of a brave That's right, on one of the Sundays. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, I think that brings us to the end of this video walking through the calendar thank you thank you so much for joining us yes um this will, of course this will be up on youtube uh, we'll, i'll probably send out an email to all the rest of our folks invite folks to uh, come and look at it and uh, i'm going to try to or if i don't get to it maybe one of you guys will put it on in the comments to put the uh, time stamps for each week i think you know because some folks have commented that shorter videos would be better so our way to solve that is to put the time stamps uh, for each week the discussion and you guys can come back and like watch just that week right before each week type thing but um i just want to thank you so much for supporting this work as long as god provides we will we will continue to be here drawing and learning and sharing what we can uh, with you so thank you god bless you all <clears throat> pardon me and uh i guess stay tuned you know more information about the planner coming out i think a lot of people are excited about the planner so that, I'm excited to be almost done with the calendar yeah. or the planner. Well, there's more projects coming. Yes. Uh, coming forth this next year. So God bless.